Alcha. We're here for the second day of the Learn the Law 21 Day Challenge and we are still looking at Octre Kamla. So we're going to, we saw the first half of it yesterday, so do go and join the challenge if you're watching this on YouTube or go and look at yesterday's uh, day one and you will see the first part of this. And if you are picking up where we left off yesterday, um, you'll remember that uh, Con, Conla's father, um, had appealed to the Druid and the Druid had basically cut off the woman from the she. But before she left, she had thrown Conla an apple. So that's where we're going to start again. She threw Conla an apple. Conla remained to the end of a month without food or drink for no nourishment seemed to him worthy to be consumed save only the apple. What he ate of the apple never diminished it, but it remained always unconsumed. Longing seized upon Conla for the woman he had seen. On the day when the month was completed, Conla was seated with his father in Mac Acher Common, and he saw the same woman coming toward him. She spoke to him thus, a woeful seat where Conla sits, among short-lived mortals, awaiting only dreadful death. The living, the immortal, call to you. They summon you to the people of Tethra, who behold you every day in the assemblies of your native land, among your beloved kinsmen. When Con heard the voice of the woman, he called to his attendants, Summon me the Druid, I see that her tongue is loosed today. Then said the woman, O Con the hundred fighter, thou shalt not cling to druidry. I will, it will not be long before thou will come to give judgments on our broad strand, a righteous one with many wonderful companies. Soon his law will reach you. He will annihilate the false law of the dree in the sight of the black magic demon. Then Khan wondered why Conla made no answer except when the woman came. Has it touched your heart what the woman says, O Conla? asked Khan. Then said Conla, It is not easy for me. Although I love my people, longing for the woman has seized me. The woman said, Thou strivest most difficult of wishes to fulfil against the wave of longing which drives thee hence. That land we may reach in my crystal boat, the fairy mound of Bodoc. There is yet another land that is no worse to reach. I see it now the sun sinks. Although it is far, we may reach it before night. That is the land which rejoices. The heart of everyone who wanders therein. No other sex lives there save women and maidens. Then Conla gave a leap into the woman's crystal boat. The people saw him going away. Hardly could their eyes follow Conla and the maiden as they fared forth over the sea. From that day forward, they were never seen again. And then said Con as he gazed upon his other son, Art. Today is Art left the lone one. Hence he came to be called Art the Lone One. Art Onfa. So that is, as I said earlier or yesterday, um, the translation from Cross and Slover. So Ancient Irish Tales is the book that that comes from. And there's a link to the text that I'm reading from, uh, which is available digitally online. So have a look down there for that. So looking over all this, um, there is that quite kind of surprising thing where the woman basically prophesies the coming of Christianity. And it's an interesting one because she really does seem kind of at odds with the the native uh, druids and the um, you know the the sovereignty of Ireland and um, she's trying to take Conla away, who is the you know the rightful ruler of the land here, and she's trying to take him to um, ostensibly to the other world, but again, as we said yesterday, there has definitely been some reading of it that this would be um, representative of, of the, the peace of heaven, you know, and the um, very kind of biblical in nature and, and representing 
and the other life as in you know heaven so that Conla has effectively died and gone to heaven when he has left with the woman so it is like an interesting little kind of twist around that the pagan element of the story has been turned to represent or to speak for the coming of Christianity and if this story or the elements of this story were um, from as early as, as a lot of people reckon that they are from, which would be around the six or seven hundreds in Ireland, that was very much at the height of, you know, the settlement of Christianity and when the, um, the monastery tradition was really gaining a foothold in Ireland. And... It's obviously it's very hard to say kind of, you know, what percentage would have been pagan and what percentage would have been Christian at that point. But I mean, you could definitely go with a with a 50 50 split, you know, in the five, six hundreds. Um, the. The elements then of the tale, um, like there are other things, there's there's uh, Carey, John Carey believes that there's a deliberate pun. Um, when she's talking about the she at the start um, because she says that they are the folk of the fairy man the ace she and a great a great fairy man or a great she it is and in old Irish the the words for she or the fairy mound or the fairy hills um, is the same as the word for peace so that could be another um, like a, as Carrie believes a deliberate pun on the peace of heaven you know that she's inviting him to the peace of heaven so there are definitely elements in there that are christian and we we were left with the question yesterday of like does it matter you know and um i believe that us as modern pagans that we can you know we can we can look at this in any way that we kind of want to really or we need to this is still a part of our living tradition and one of the things that has come up lately in a couple of discussions that I've seen online and that are is um the way paganism never really left Ireland and you're going to see this throughout this entire you know three weeks to know more about Irish law challenge because we will have so much of this Christian and pagan crossover to contend with. And if that's a problem for you, then you're going to have uh, quite a lot of difficulty um, with working with the Irish law, the source law. Because it really did mix and blend. And as I said in yesterday's video, there, I'm, I'm very much in the middle in all of this because I don't believe that it actually matters. I believe that the Christianity that developed here in Ireland, um, Catholic Church notwithstanding, because there's a lot of damage uh, that has been done, but the actual Christian religion that developed here in Ireland was uh, quite healthy in nature. So we will, you know, like we, we can talk about who would have been telling these stories as well and while we wouldn't have the lore without the monasteries and that's just the way of it because there wasn't the same kind of academic written uh, tradition or um, availability in Ireland before the educated monastic um, elite kind of were able to step out of society step out of their work and what we did have before the monks arrived was the villa tradition the, and villa is translated as poet but villa actually means a lot more than that and we might go into that I'm just keep an eye on the time it's nearly um, nine and a half minutes so we might go into what the villa were um, a little bit more in subsequent video actually we will we definitely will but what I would like you to do is your point to ponder for today is to think about what poetry means to you right now and what a filler or a poet means. And, you know, just kind of benchmark your position on that as well. And again, you, you know, you can't be wrong on this. 
Um, well, you might you might not understand it in the context of the Irish tradition, but that's okay. That's why you're here. That's why you're on this challenge. So we are going to explore that further. But for now, I would like you to um, maybe discuss it in the group, go into the Facebook group and have a chat about it and, you know, figure out kind of where you're coming from on that. And again, with the context of the rest of the um, of the stories, maybe two points to ponder and um, just to finish up on this Oxford Conla. And we will look at more other world journeying and definitely we'll look at uh, maybe the voyage of Bran, Imran Bran, um, and the Octri and the Imran tales and the difference between them. We will look at those in subsequent days' videos. But um, let us know in the Facebook group as well what you think of the story, the, at the conclusion of our story, what you think of it as a whole and how it made you feel and what you think about it and what your position is on it okay it's long of all and like and subscribe and do join the challenge uh, there'll be a link below and make sure that um, you catch up on previous day's videos uh, with the curriculum in the irish pagan school it's long of all